Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramph. I have a lot to talk about today. I got some pre-critics, some news about fires, and some um, basically uh, messing around with our genetics, uh, DNA, and basically making designer babies. I'll talk about that a little bit in news. We got some weather. Uh, I got a full kind of like feature it length um, summer series, uh, Get Bob Part 4. If you haven't seen Get Bob Part 1 through 3, you may want to tune out for these videos, even though they have no like order. It just basically from the very first one that gets made, and it's basically just re redo it over and over again. Sorry, I'm, I'm just not <laughs> very skeptical of these <laughs> movies, because it's just like, let's just do the same thing we did last year and the year before. Anyways, let's talk about what's happening in the weather. So currently, it is 52 degrees outside. There is a red flag warning for uh, search, um, areas of smoke and hazardous areas. Um, look, there's going to be areas of smoke happening later today with a high of 87 degrees, low of 56. Your Saturday is going to be a high of 83, so things are going to cool off, but it said it's going to be mostly sunny. If we don't get any uh, smoke here, then it's going to be a perfect day to do your farmer's market and get out and about this weekend as well. But most likely, the, I won't be getting out as much this weekend because uh, MCAT will be doing a 24-hour live stream, and I'll talk about that more when we get into some MCAT news and social media type stuff. So let's talk about some news that are happening. The Lolo, the Lolo Peak fire exploded to 15,090 acres Thursday after making a four-mile run in the Mormon Creek area overnight. After more than a month of crews and hotshots were um, concentrating on fires in more than in more accessible parts of the state of Montana, um, and keeping an eye on Lolo, um, folks have been on standby to evacuate their homes. On Thursday, three hotshot crews worked downhill building hand lines and burning out brush and understory as all along the north northernmost and southernmost ski trails on the failed ski area west of Florence. And of course. <laughs> Sorry, it's just sorry. It's just in my mind that um, um, the whole like they tried to plan on making a ski resort up in Lolo Peak for forever and just never really panned out. So that has nothing to do with the fire. I'm sorry. I, I don't mean to do that. But okay, using um, drip torches filled with a, a mixture of diesel and gasoline, the hotshots plan to bring the fire down to the primary containment line, which runs parallel to Highway 93. By burning out the lighter fuel fuels below the trees, the crews plan to decrease the intensity of the fire as it approaches to the containment line, basically fighting fire with a controlled fire. Hotshot crews plan to move the fire from McLean Creek to the southern edge and from Mormon Creek to the northern edge to meet in the middle. Um, and of course, here's a picture from uh, basically Wednesday night. I, when I first saw this, I was like, whoa, did a volcano explode? But yeah, this is a lot of the smoke that's coming up from Lolo Peak. And you can see all the more of the smoke in the lower areas this area and then up here is basically the highest point of the smoke and then that was only from Wednesday I mean if you want to check it out you can kind of just take peek your head outside uh, in the Missoula area kind of see what's going on out there um, the smoke kind of like stayed in the southernmost uh, hills of the Missoula area South Hills and um, kind of avoiding Missoula altogether so most people in Missoula haven't had too much uh, to worry about in terms of smoke but it has been uh, smelling kind of campfirey outside as well. I'm going to go real quick to the uh, Missoula air quality just just to give you a a nice little uh, look and see what uh, today's air is all about. Uh, it's going to be moderate. It's a moderate air quality out and about today. Um, it's it looks like it's going to go up. It usually peaks at around 11 to 1 p.m. and then it starts going down again um, just because that's usually like the how it's been. So. Currently, it, it stands at 23.3 particular matter in terms of um, air quality. So let me go back to the uh, the page, and you can kind of see, get an idea of where the areas are at. Yellow area is moderate. Um, orange is unhealthy. Um, see the lake up there? It's very unhealthy. Um, unhealthy. F actually, this is unhealthy. This is unhealthy for sensitive groups. Sorry, and this is very unhealthy up in Butte. Um, here are some good areas that are that are doing fine. Thompson Falls. Frenchtown and Missoula are doing just fine. Um, Hamilton uh, is at uh, unhealthy for sensitive groups. Uh, so that's kind of give you a little map. I went to svc.mt.gov. You can basically type in Missoula air quality on any search engine and it will bring you to that website. You can find out what your air quality is for your day. And also the uh, Missoula County Health Department also is a great resource for you guys to find out what the air quality is as well. But let's move on to some um, embryos. So at an Oregon Health and Science University, scientists show 
show reporters that they can manipulate DNA in human embryos. Um, human eggs are the key starting point for the groundbreaking experiments underway in these labs. Um, it's run by uh, Shirkhaus uh, Mitopov, a biologist who's been on the cutting edge of embryonic genetic research for decades. Um, he and his um, international team electrified the world this summer when a group of announced that it has, succe has successfully and seemingly safely figured out how to effectively edit the DNA in human embryos. Human eggs, which are provided by female donors, are taken from one room to another to be tinkered with and adjusted. Uh, I heard this on NPR, and they describe this as a mutation that can be, ca can be controlled by humans on a cellular level, which can get rid of her hereditary diseases like heart disease, sickle cell anemia, and other many cancer-related um, genes, not to be associated with um, genetic diseases. Uh, designer babies are what people fear, but for the scientists in Oregon Health and Science University, it's for seeing if they can repair mutations in humans that uh, can seemingly kill people in the long term of um, genetic mutations like heart disease, uh, all these other things as well. So that's kind of what's happening in the news uh, in and around, uh, but most of you are going to be worried about the fire areas. Uh, one of our coworkers here, uh, I guess actually a couple of our coworkers has um, had to evacuate a couple of their places. Um, our, uh, yeah, one um, one lives up in Florence, so Florence is it's kind of been on a uneasy wait to wait and see kind of thing. But um, they're told that there should be on standby f for evacuations. Um, they said uh, my um, my coworker said that he uh, one of his friends had uh, houses burned down. Um, so it's it's very interesting uh, to see what's going on with that. Fire crews are working hard to see how it's moving forward with that. So that kind of uh, wraps up what's happening in the news area. Here is a bunch of new programs that are going to be airing on MCAT. And when I come back, I'll have pre-critic for you talking about some new movies that are coming out this weekend. They said, and, and they decided exactly the opposite of the Second Circuit. They said, the authorization for mu use of military force is all the authority you need from Congress. You can go ahead and detain them without violating the Non-Detention Act. So they got the decision they wanted from the Fourth Circuit. You know, they staged the whole thing to get the decision out of the Fourth Circuit, and they got what they wanted. And so what was the government's response? For this terribly dangerous person who they had to take out in hoods and blackout goggles and earmuffs and shackles to go to the dentist. What did they do once they got the decision that said he was, um, they could keep him, he was just too dangerous? Um, they turned him loose. Back. And then at the end, yeah. 
Hey guys, welcome back. Now let's talk about some new movies that are coming out this weekend, starting with this movie. Uh, do you like 90s action buddy comedies? Uh, here's yet another one that is uh, certain to entertain you as a type of people who don't care much about the plot, but you're like, hey, I like Sam Jackson and Ryan Reynolds, uh, and Ryan Reynolds is cut from Marvel after all. This Okay, th this is you, not not me. But okay, the Hitman's Barbie, the Hitman's Bodyguard stars those people in a movie. Oh, Samuel Hayek is also in this movie. Um, cool. Um, anyways, the point of this movie is the Hitman knows something that makes him a target, and Reynolds' character must protect the guy who probably has killed people he was supposed to protect. But now he has to protect the guy that has been a thorn in his side from quite some time. Action comedies, aren't, aren't they just wonderful? Next one, uh, from the Italian job, but for people who aren't as smart, um, y you know what NASCAR fans need? A comedy. Um, let's make fun of some more indie fans as we dive, that's Indianapolis 500, not indie as in indie movies, um, uh, fans as we dive into a heist film about two brothers who hire a convict to give them advice how to steal crap from people. This movie has NASCAR in it and Channing Tatum, so you know it might be a movie with Channing Tatum. Um, it also has a couple of other act actors in it uh, who for the plot in some ways, NASCAR comedy heist film. Enjoy, Renix. And that's pretty much all the new movies that are coming out this weekend. There's a bunch of indie films that are coming out, not to be associated with Indianapolis, but these are independent films. But that's coming out this pretty much this weekend as well. But I have a new movie that's premiering for you guys, and it is from our Boys and Girls Club of Missoula County. It's called Get Bob Part 4. There's like 50 of them. Boy, are you? And that dick and dick will tell us no. Seriously? Give me Bob! Let's go, Bob! Please! Bob, please! Yeah. The hunt is on. Congratulations, I know everything about you now. Judging by this information, you are an alien. No, I'm not an alien. I'm looking for an alien. <gasps> alien? What type of alien are you looking for? 
looking yeah. for? Yeah, what type of alien are you looking for? It's a bomb! Rarest alien of all mankind. Yeah. <sighs> okay. What? What the? the uh, but, uh, uh. Hey, where are you going? We finally got away from that ugly guy with the bag, and I'm so glad. Oh, I missed you. Ew. <laughs> My mom. But well, remember, we have to protect Bob at all costs. Wanna know what I think? <laughs> oh, great guy. This um, one evil minor guy that's currently a bad guy, and she says that's ugly. Yeah, bad. I'm not saying that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. He is really ugly. <laughs> you want to know why I think about that? <laughs> oh, you brain god. Yeah. They never listen to me anyway. Where were you? I had a hearty breakfast. Stupid. Where Come on. with the money? We have Don't to worry. get Bob! Okay, guys, what's the plan? Well, Space Cop is my brother. What? What? You never told us that when we met. Well, I was thinking that I could distract him and say, hey, bro, and stuff like that. Fine, and I, mean, I guess that's a good plan. Yeah, good point. Yeah. So let's go. And then we're going to steal Bob, and you're the distractor. So okay. So you go. Hey, bro. Uh, I'm not giving you any more money. What do you want? What? It's not. I'm not giving you any more money. Okay. What do you want? Hey. Uh, uh, like. Come and see my bro. And bring him. And, and technically, I'm so older than you. It's just that I was frozen for three years, so. That only means you're older than me because I'm frozen. Get I was frozen for three years. Wait, where's Bob? 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 Bob?
taking Bob. Why? Space cars! Amen! Really, dude, we got disguised together. I got short term memory loss. Oh, hey, Rain Guy! I got Bob for my friends. And I think. Oh, Rain Guy! I get no respect from anybody. Bob's mine! That fair is older than all of those kids. Anyways, let's move on to some city council. So the city, um, they were talking a little bit about um, basically turning homes into tourist homes. But there are some issues with having tourist homes is that there are a bunch of strangers that basically move into one of your neighbor's homes for a couple days um, out of the week pretty much all throughout the whole summer. So there's a basically a revolving door of strangers in your neighborhoods. And that's one of the things that people have problems with. Here is Sam Sale, who is with the Missoula Organization of Realtors, who uh, reflects on this. There seemed to be a view that the list would facilitate um, people coming forward to register their tourist home because others in the community, other tourist home operators, um, could I guess check if you know they saw a tourist home operating that they weren't sure if it was registered or not. They could check it against the list. I, I, I can see the logic behind that, but I guess what I would say is that it's only been about a, well, less than a year actually since the tourist home ordinance was passed. I think more people will come forward and uh, register by their own volition. Once they're made aware that there is a registration requirement, um, it seemed as if from the staff presentation that most people weren't aware of it, who were operating a tourist home without being registered, and once they were made aware, they were quick to register. And I think as time goes on, and maybe the, the city can be a little more proactive in making the registration um, requirement known to the public, then maybe that will um, will help aid enforcement. But All right, so um, that was Sam Sill talking about that. Um, we have another comment by... Um, Gwen Jones, but first let me talk about some of the things that are ordinance and some of the things that they want to update the ordinance. State law statutory prohibits the uh, on the use of distribution lists. Um, as, um, as discussed during a, uh, the update, they can't give people uh, addresses of those within 150 feet of the applicant, and yet they're posting the address. There's a um, disconnect there. Um, there's a serious privacy and safety concern here. A councilwoman. Um, West mentioned that there was recently a spree of robberies in the Seattle focused on tourists' home. Um, the, uh, the reason for this directive near never made sense t uh, in the first place to some people, according to West. Uh, many of the issues that have come up is the mysterious folks who come and go without any knowledge that one of your neighbors has an Airbnb. Um, but on the other hand, 
um, you have strangers moving in and out throughout the summer, and there's it's, it's like a it's an interesting thing because it's in a residential area, and they're basically turning residential into kind of like a commercial uh, side hustle. It basically here's Gwen Jones, and she's talking about some of the issues in terms of um, strangers moving into the houses, if if only for temporarily. I think there is something that we need to address, kind of a, a safety net issue, and my experience. 12 to 18 months ago when we were debating this is I did have people in my ward who came to me and said, you know, I might have a tourist home next to me. I don't know. There are people in and out every week. I don't know them. The house changed hands a year ago. No one has ever come over to introduce me. It's really weird. And and that's not a good dynamic in a neighborhood. So. I okay, so that was uh, um, Gwen Jones talking about uh, some of the issues that some people in neighborhoods are having um, in terms of that. Uh, many suggestions that Gwen um, has to the city website is to show homes which homes are tourist homes without giving any personal details on them because for the most part tourist homes are supposed to be um, in a way um, – commercial knowledge for people looking to get into tourist homes so they want to be able to basically have a list of homes that are considered tourist homes but on the other hand here's Jim Nugent with uh, some of the issues that may come around in terms of having tourist homes. It's because we have them registered that we might have a list but uh, a lot of people might not know what's going on in their neighborhood or who's doing what in their house and there are privacy provisions in the Constitution and state laws for, for that purpose, but uh, I couldn't tell you uh, in the neighborhood I live which houses are rentals and which houses are owned uh, in all instances. I have a general sense of it, but uh, sometimes the, they're rented and you, you don't realize it. I know that there have been teacher exchanges in our neighborhood, uh, teachers going to Australia and people in Australia coming here and doing the teacher exchange and similar things like that going on, but uh, there's no absolute right to be always being aware of what's going on inside someone's residence. All right, so that was City Attorney Jim Nugent talking about that, and it just kind of comes for me like in another aspect. This is a creating a business out of a residential residential neighborhood. So in many respects, of course, this ordinance was already passed, so it's too late. People can do uh, Airbnbs if they so choose. Many other places, like if there's a homeowner um, association in certain neighborhoods, most neighborhoods do have this. Some neighborhoods don't bother having this, but if they do have this, it has a way for people coming together for this kind of thing. And um, uh, and with this, they can actually have sites like, hey, we're not. It would be great if you don't have a tourist home, but a lot of times it's like it doesn't have any teeth. But of course, you know, the headache of a homeowners association coming after you is um, a way to disenchant people from having tourist homes in the first place. But that's just an idea. Um, but there's also. Uh, um, so in many respects, privacy could be for residents and not for temporary renters of these tourist homes. But it's an interesting um, trend that's going on for this past year, especially this summer, which was the first official summer of having tourist homes um, being, I guess, uh, allowed through the city of Missoula. I don't know. Like it's an ordinance made as a reactive thing for tourist homes that started to gain popularity. Uh, for the past year or two. Of course, the city moved not to have a registry made for certain homes because um, for some people on the city council said that it might in, uh, impact the, uh, um, the people who rent the tourist homes. But here, I but here is uh, one last quote from um, Gwen Jones. She's talking a little bit about that in response to whole privacy issues. It's either zero or 10. You don't do anything or you call the police. And frankly, people aren't always comfortable calling the police. Whereas if they can call in and say, is this a tourist, is something going on? Is there a contact information for this house? There isn't, okay, now they're gonna get registered and get into the fold. I just think neighbors need to have some recourse in this situation of people who are in there for four days over homecoming, not respecting the neighborhood. All right, so that was uh, Gwen Jones uh, reflecting on sometimes when people rent tourist homes, uh, they have the um, ideas. It's like, it's, you know, it's like, oh, I'm only going to be here for a couple days. I'm only, I mean, like, I can pay these people to rent their home, and then I can pretty much just be annoying, and then I never have to see any of the neighbors ever again. Not like the people who own the homes who basically may or may not have to deal with the repercussions of uh, having strangers. Um, constantly revolving through their doors. 
All right, so moving on, that's kind of like I just kind of leave on that note. There, I mean, tourist homes like I've been in, I've, d I've done that before. I was I stayed in a tourist home. It's great. It's wonderful. Um, it's just a nice little temporary place just for just to stay and whatnot. But a lot of times, it's like if you really think about it, it's like you're basically tur turning a residential neighborhood into a commercial business. Moving on, so um, admin and finance. Uh, the city talks about replacing Dan Chemist on the Missoula Re Redevelopment, Redevelopment Agency Board. Um, Dan Chemist retired not too long ago, and Mayor John Engen requested that former attorney for the city during the water condemnation hearing, Tasha Jones, uh, for the old position, for the old position, Missoula Redevelopment Agency Board for a term to commence immediately and to expire on April 30th, 2021, unless it's up for uh, renewal. And the city vote will be on this on Monday. Um, and of course, you can watch these meetings and more by going to ci.missoula.mt.us. It, it is a great and wonderful website and resource to get in touch and what the city is up doing and what the city plans to do and what upcoming agenda items are going to be happening. Um, I believe next, uh, on August 30th, which is uh, two weeks from the last Wednesday, they will be talking more about the uh, the issues that are happening with the Garden City Funeral Home and the city of Missoula trying to turn um, Missoula Cemetery into a, a monument selling business, something that I've been following. Uh, it's it, because it's like one of those things. It's just like it's um, it, you may think it, it, it's just it's not just one thing. It's also like one of the things that um, Missoula Chamber of Commerce is actually looking to the Missou city of Missoula as this is like just another step forward in making the city of Missoula more of a, a business rather than a government to serve the people. So. I have no horse in this race. I just am reflecting on it, and it's pretty interesting to me. What's going on here? I don't know if it's interesting to you, but I have some um, art. I have an art clip for you guys, and then when I return, we'll talk about events that are happening in in the city of Missoula for your weekend. All right, moving on, let's talk about some things that are happening in the city of Missoula in terms of events. Um, there's a lot happening in Missoula. There's always something happening. But India for SMBs, uh, uh, um, they can join us, you can join them for the uh, uh, Gilkey Executive Education Building first floor boardroom for, uh, for a free event to learn about business opportunities for small and medium business in the Indian marketplace. Um, Mr. Janet Saw, Chief uh, Mentor of Mentor on Road USA, will provide first hand information on Indian market dynamics, best pr prospect sectors, opportunities for U.S. Um, companies to benefit from several now new Indian government initiatives, such as small cities, digital India, and startup India, and an overview of Indian investments in the U.S. Um, Magic Noodle Art is happening at Families First Children's Museum from 11 to 11.30 a.m. Let your imagination run wild as you transform these special noodles into all kinds of interesting creations. Um, kids table at the Missoula Public Library starting at 11.30 a.m. 11.30 uh, a.m. is the place uh, where you guys can get a free lunch. It's for kids who, actually people who are 18 and younger. Um, it's, it's basically for every person who has a meal, USDA 
um, gets gives more money to the Missoula Food Bank. And this is sponsored by the Missoula Food Bank, food that is provided through money and grants through the USDA. It's wonderful and great. So basically, think about it as getting a free lunch. Um, there's no such thing as a free lunch, but in this case, by getting this free lunch, you're basically providing jobs for the Missoula Food Bank. Um, New York Dog Film Festival um, is happening at 5 p.m. at the Roxy Theater, um, a philanthropic uh, celebration of many ways that you can appreciate the remarkable bond between dogs and their people. Canine-themed films from around the world create and sh a share audience experience that inspires, educates, and entertains, so you know, you're not going to see the plague dogs, um, and animate and narrative vi films with a New York City premiere every fall, the festival that then travels around the country partnering in each location with an outstanding animal welfare welfare ed organization that brings adoptable dogs I into theaters and receives a portion of the ticket sales so the whole idea of this is that this is a New York uh, film festival that travels around the United States and they're here in Missoula at the Roxy Theater here at 5 p.m. And they'll also be here on Saturday as well. Family Friendly Friday is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge every Friday from 6 to 8 p.m. Top Hat uh, basically allows families to come down, hang out, uh, have drink specials for adults while they let their kids just run around and be crazy. Um, yeah, pretty much that's, that's it in a nutshell. Um, there's Outlaw Kart Races. Big Sky Cartway um, is Montana's premier outlaw kart track located 10 miles from beautiful Missoula, Montana. Big Sky Cartway is the uh, seventh mile oval dirt track featuring outlaw carts. C racers range from the age of five years of age to 60 plus. Experience top-notch racing f from May through September, a true family event, and you can join and cheer your favorite racer or bring your own cart to race. The thrill of dirt track racing is not too far away, and this is going to be at the Big Sky Cartway starting at 7 p.m. tonight. Water Jogging is a local film. A bunch of Montanans got together and made a comedy about basketball, coconut butter, hydrogen peroxide, clowns, um, ancient conspiracy, homelessness, identity theft, spheres, death, rebirth, and friendship. And it starts at 8 p.m. at the Roxy Theater. So if you can stay there after the dog documentary and adopt your own dog, you can hang out and watch Water Jogging, which will be playing this weekend at the Roxy Theater. If you... Uh, so here's another one at Zootown Arts Community Center. You have no race, you have no culture is happening at 8.30 p.m. Reckless Kelly is going to be at um, Top Hat Lounge Rock Music. Russ Nutt and the Revelators are going to be at Union Club. Pay Dirt is going to be at the Sunrise Saloon. It's country music at 9.30 p.m. And let's kick it off with some Saturday events. I'm going to um, talk about all the events all in one shot. And then I'm going to show you an uh, art clip. And then I'm going to come back and talk about some things that are happening at MCAT. So let's start with um, s m m morning markets are happening from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. on Saturday. So it's the Clark Fork River Market, the P People's Market, and the OG or, um, Farmer's Market happening at the Red X's, Clark Fork um, under the Higgins Bridge, and the People's Market on Pine Street, right across from the Thomas Marr Bar, and also near Jimmy John's. Um, Pet Fest is the Missoula Fairgrounds. The Missoula County Fairgrounds is pleased to host this annual event for the first time ever. For more details, contact Marketplace Media and you can go to PetFestMontana.com for more information. I'm just glad they didn't say first annual. Um, eclipses, the Union Spectri Spectri Discovery Center, they're talking about the eclipse, um, and they teach kids how to experience the eclipse in, in its full um, enjoyment that is happening as well. So that's happening at 10 a.m. on Saturday. Um, here is another thing. Uh, Living Art of Montana is doing uh, the right stuff with um, Jack Shiflet, and right, it's spelled... Right. Um, a Living Art Montana is a drop-in Saturday workshop that facilitates uh, the writing is for non-writers alike. Um, they use easy guide writing prompts to explore writing as a tool for self-expression, offered free to for charge for 18 and up, dealing with an illness or loss. No experience is necessary. For questions, you can call them at 549-5329. Again, that's 549-5329. Living Art is a place to create, share, and heal. And you can go to livingartofmontana.org for more information. And this is 1030 to 1230, so it's not too long. Um, summer concert, Phillipsburg will be celebrating 150 years of existence. Um, at w uh, And they're going to be doing this at, at Winningoff Park Arena. So you can join them. They have Cold Heart Cash Show, Jeremy McComb, a uh, hit and hit songwriter friends, and Showdown. So Phillipsburg Outdoor Amphitheater at Winningoff Park from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Tickets available at... Uh, the following retailers, Phillipsburg, Phillipsburg Brewery, Montana, Gems, Back uh, Creek, 
Pottery Snookies, Gem Mountain Granite Country Insurance, and you can go to uh, whofish.org for more information about this 150-year anniversary of the town celebration. Drop-in tour at Montana Art Museum starting at 12 p.m. Mary Oleschler uh, and is an enthusiastic, enthusiastic artist, MAM supporter, and experienced teacher. She will guide you through MAM galleries and other ex ex exhibits from um, 12 to 1 p.m. The tour is free and open to the public. You can just drop in. Um, all about ospreys. Frenchtown Pond State Park, Montana is home to many raptors, but ospreys are really something else. You can come learn all about the unique raptors native to Montana underways at Frenchtown Pond State Park, West Shelter, on Saturday, August 19th from 7 to 8 p.m. Janelle Dowling, an osprey researcher from the Montana Natural History Center, will be presenting this program. And this program is reopened open to the public, and you can contact them at 542-5500, or you go to councilgrove.americorps at gmail.com for any questions. Good luck remembering that one. Um, flamenco guitar classes with Jason McGuire, El Rubio, um, Marky Mountain Ballet Theater at 7 p.m. You get to learn some flamenco dancing. Um, and you get to enjoy some flamenco dancing as well. Salsa 406, you do some salsa dance and the Dark Horse Bar starting at 8.30 p.m. New Breed Brass Band is going to be at the Top Hat Lounge at 9 p.m. Absolutely with Chris Moon is going to be at the Badlander Karaoke by Kaleidoscope at BFW Bar. Lolo Creek Band at the Sunrise Saloon is going to be country music. I usually kind of mow over the night events because it's mostly just like, hey, you're going to be out drinking and these are some of the entertainment that's going to be there. So. Hello, Montana. Um, so here are some of the events that I see on Sunday. There's a Sundays in the Park, a Glacier uh, National Park day trip is happening, Montana Adventure Shuttle, and they usually meet at Silver Park. And it, you basically meet up there at 7 a.m. and you do a day trip to uh, Glacier National Park. They're going to be doing this pretty much all summer long in August. Um, basically, we're almost done with summer, so yeah. Anyways, it's $107. It's just a whole day trip. Uh, they shuttle you up there with a Missoula Adventure Shuttle, and you get a whole other experience at Glacier National Park. Yoga camp. Um, the, um, they're doing a yoga fitness center, 10 a.m. Yep, there's all sorts of stuff. There's macro photography at Mar Rocky Mountain School Photography. Soul therapy workshop for women at the Learn Learning Center at Red Willow starting at 1 p.m. And those are some of the things that are happening pretty much all day. And I think uh, Montana Fiddlers are going to be the Sunrise Saloon at 1 p.m. And I believe this is a kids' event, and it's going to happen from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m. at the Sunrise Saloon. So these are some of the events that are happening in and around Missoula. And I better stop talking because I'm starting to uh, salivate like crazy. So when I come back, I'm going to talk about everything that's happening at MCAT this weekend for a 24-hour stream. All great art happening all down the street, down Patty Street at Missoula Art Museum. There's a bunch of new art, and that's just at the Missoula Art Museum. I got a new, a bunch of new art clips from our very own Rick Phillips. I want to thank him for doing all that. Here's some MCAT news that are happening. Um, if you want to know uh, about MCAT's um, Twitch stream, um, MCAT will be um, twitching. Uh, Twitch.tv is a um, online live streaming um, Twitch channel, uh, TV channel, sorry. And what it does is that we're going to be doing a 24-hour gaming stream. So we're going to be playing all sorts of variety of games on our Twitch stream for 24 
hours on twitch.tv and you can look that up by going to twitch t twitch tv twitch.tv slash mcat gaming channel and we'll be basically gaming all weekend we'll be playing all sorts of fun favorite games um, multiplayer games we'll be using a system that allows us to use multiple um, computers all at the same time and it's going to be wonderful and if you want um, more information about mcat in general in terms of um, any general questions or any general um, getting involved with mcat in our broadcast media station um, you can go to mcat.org if you want to learn more information about myself you go to wakeupmissoula.wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula so nice we made you write it out twice you click on videos for more content in terms of previous videos dubbing stuff um, summer series past interviews and more all by logging on to wakeupmissoula.wixsite wixsite.com slash wakeupmissoula but I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning on Wake Up Missoula it is August 18th I will join you next week on August 23rd which is also my birthday and I will do no wait wait yeah it totally is so I'll be joining you guys next Wednesday for that so uh, once again I want to thank you all for joining me for Wake Up Missoula I'm Scott Ramph.